Welcome to Did You Know, a local heritage podcast brought to you in association with Chom FM, Pickering College Radio, and The History Hound Presents. My name is Richard McLeod, better known locally as The History Hound. In this history, we will look back at our, into our local history, at the people and events uh, who made a difference. And hopefully we will uh, uh, attempt to answer the question, did you know? Today we're going to uh, go back to the period when Newmarket was under the grips of Prohibition. Prohibition in Newmarket lasted for a total of 50 years. Today we'll take a, a look at the whys and hows and get a feel for the period in question. With the debate over whether Newmarket should open uh, brick and mortar uh, outlets for the sale of marijuana, I was asked whether, given uh, Newmarket's history, uh, that whether we would uh, jump at the chance to offer uh, marijuana uh, in that manner. And I very quickly said that given our history, I doubted very much that we would uh, do so. We tend to be uh, conservative in this community. We have been uh, since our founding. And I pointed to the very fact that we had prohibition for 50 years uh, as an example of how we tend to uh, look back at uh, the effects of substances within our community and make hard decisions. And it takes a while for us to decide to move forward with any new ideas. After the incorporation of Newmarket as a village, back in February, of 15th, uh, February 15th of 1858, we quickly moved forward with petitions to limit the sale of alcohol. Initially there was a petition of 74 signatures asking for um, a stopping of the uh, issuing of saloon licenses. This was not initially uh, accepted, but a second uh, petition bearing uh, 52 signatures very quickly was presented to council and council decided that it would in fact um, refuse to grant any licenses, uh, new licenses for saloons for a period of one year. What they really wanted to do is they wanted to re-examine the issue more fully before they uh, decided uh, how to proceed. In January of 1863, the issuing of a tavern and shop license was passed from the control of the local council to a licensing commission, but the council still had the power to stipulate the fee for alcohol licenses. Council could not uh, grant, uh, grant a special license or waive the need of said license. So uh, their first step was to, to prohibit the issuing of new licenses and to limit the number of uh, licenses that were in fact granted. Our first uh, mayor, uh, William Kane, presented a petition to council on behalf of he and his wife and a group of other concerned citizens with 203 signatures petitioning council to refuse the granting of shop licenses and to suppress public gambling rooms locally. A few years later, another petition uh, arose uh, sponsored by a gentleman named Danforth Roche uh, of 174 signatures and in this particular case what they wanted was a uh, bylaw passed uh, which would require shopkeepers to confine their businesses um, to the selling of merchandise only and exclusively keeping uh, the selling and liquor of license out of the public consumption. Council's response uh, to this petition uh, was to pass uh, a, uh, a petition which did exactly that. Now why was this uh, there's so much concern about uh, the sale of alcohol in Newmarket? Well we, we know from newspaper reports that in 1882 over 600 barrels of liquor were imported into Newmarket um, every month. 
which is amazing because that's uh, about two barrels of alcohol a, uh, a day that was being consumed in Newmarket. During the late 1880s and continuing right through to the 1890s, efforts were being stepped up to wipe out uh, what the papers called this diabolic, diabolical trade. Articles appeared in the local press. Lectures were, were frequently performed throughout the town, um, urging the public to, uh, to support uh, Newmarket, um, bringing about prohibition. And uh, the weight of the public um, uh, institutions uh, the newspaper, local newspaper, and the the council uh, eventually did uh, uh, cause us to to seriously consider prohibition. The local temperance people were calculate uh, were circulating a petition asking council to reduce tavern licenses and to disallow uh, any further shop licenses altogether. The churches. Um, jumped on board, of course, and uh, by the, uh, the 1890s, uh, the whole idea that Newmarket would uh, uh, take up prohibition was, I think, most people agreed was it was going to happen. One of the uh, solutions that Council proposed was to, uh, to institute in 1892 uh, a increase in the licensing fee for alcohol uh, to two hundred dollars which was a considerable amount of money at the, at the time again along with this uh, the temperance people were back uh, into all of the the uh, local uh, buildings giving lectures about the evils of alcohol It was common at that time for men, as I say, to come into town. Uh, Newmarket, of course, was surrounded by farms. The local men would come into town and return uh, either loading their wagons down with whiskey or loading themselves down with whiskey. Uh, local police reports indicate that there was a great deal of, uh, of disturbance on the streets uh, with shouting and singing. Uh, of course, uh, Local fights uh, were taking place on Main Street. I know it's hard to believe uh, seeing Main Street today, but uh, that was a, a real issue. Horses were being uh, replaced at that time, and so uh, a lot of people were in, uh, uh, couldn't afford to have a car. Uh, it was very early in the history of the car, uh, so people couldn't afford a car, and so a number of people uh, mostly men, I must admit, uh, were stranded in Newmarket, uh, too drunk to go home, and uh, this was affecting the local economy as well. One of the first uh, uh, murders in Newmarket area uh, uh, took place on Eagle Street at a tavern called Dines Inn. Uh, the story is, is uh, retold when I do my, my uh, ghost walks. It concerns a gentleman who had purchased a new gun, and I suppose what had happened was that uh, he wanted to demonstrate his new gun. He obviously uh, had had a great deal uh, to drink. Uh, to demonstrate his gun, he fired out a open window and hit somebody going by on their horse, uh, killing them. Uh, this, of course, uh, caused a local scandal and gave uh, more emphasis to the uh, temperance people. Uh, to push for a solution to our, our excess alcohol problem. This is Did You Know on 102.7 CHOP FM. We will be right back after this. You're listening to Did You Know? The History of Prohibition in Newmarket on 102.7 CHOP FM. If you take a look at the local papers, you'll see that the headlines uh, in the paper talked about the fact that, uh, that drinking 
uh, was a uh, was contributing to uh, to a decrease in morality and a decrease in uh, in business locally, and that uh, we needed to come up with a local option. Since Aurora and Newmarket were both eager participants, they decided to work together. And eventually, a well-attended meeting was held in the town hall here in Newmarket on May of 1909. The issue soon gathered support, and the uh, hotel keepers in Newmarket soon announced that they would shut up all their houses and sheds if this local option was adopted. So the local uh, taverns and hotels obviously objected to this uh, the idea of prohibition, uh, and they decided to issue an ultimatum. But unfortunately, that ultimatum wasn't uh, effective, and uh, both Newmarket and Aurora decided that they would proceed um, with this option. The Temperance Committee uh, had a score to sell, uh, settle with the uh, with the local taverns and uh, and hotels, and so they took prompt action to guarantee that the proper hotel accommodation would continue but that uh, they would not no longer be able to sell alcohol. This prompted uh, the Temperance League to purchase the King George Hotel. At that time it was called the Railway Hotel uh, but they purchased the King George Hotel and one of the interesting things about the King George Hotel was it was effectively run as a, a prohibition hotel uh, by the Temperance League uh, their purpose was to prove that uh, while well, you could have local accommodation uh, here in Newmarket, it wasn't necessary to sell alcohol in order to be a thriving business. Finally, a petition uh, was successful and the, uh, the council announced uh, the following in the local papers. They said, having received a petition from the proper number of ratepayers, the council of the town of Newmarket has decided to submit a local option bylaw to be voted upon um, on January 3rd, 1910, by those who are uh, able to vote. They said that uh, the question would be very clear. It would be, uh, should you be able to purchase alcohol? Uh, within the confines of Newmarket. This option was in fact uh, successful and uh, from 1910 uh, Newmarket was completely uh, dry. By all counts it was certainly a lively campaign in which the whole community took uh, part in the discussion. It might be mentioned that uh, prominent businessmen, the clergy from both the Protestant and Catholic churches uh, would, continue, would contribute their support uh, with temper, uh, for temperance and uh, a number of the leading uh, leaders of uh, the temperance movement came from uh, the churches. Not only locally, but uh, during that period we had uh, temperance people from all over the province uh, including uh, uh, churches from uh, as far away as Western Canada come and speak on the evils of alcohol. The actual vote um, that was carried out uh, gave us a result of 492 uh, people uh, voting uh, for prohibition. So this wasn't something that just squeaked by. This was uh, uh, well thought out, I think, and probably uh, well decided uh, idea to to uh, for us to go dry. Immediately, the ladies' sitting room was closed, and the prices of meals and of the yard and shed accommodations were raised. So essentially what happened was that uh, if you went to a tavern or you went to a hotel, you could no longer drink. Uh, and to make up for that uh, lost revenue, the, uh, the hotels raised the cost of uh, dining uh, within the hotel and also staying in the hotel. 
uh, overnight. Sitting rooms are closed, uh, which means that, uh, first of all, the only people who are really going into the hotels were the men. Uh, the women and the accommodation for women uh, was reduced, if not completely eliminated. The, as I said, the uh, Forsyth Hotel, uh, which, had, which became the Railway Hotel and ultimately the King George Hotel, uh, was purchased by a, the Temperance League for the price of $8,000 and, uh, uh, and uh, shares were sold uh, to support um, the endeavor. From the beginning, the uh, shareholders were paid 6% interest on uh, their investment and it's interesting that uh, it stuck you know uh, what happened of course was that uh, uh, Newmarket uh, and the residents of Newmarket had to find a way to supply the alcohol uh, that they couldn't buy legally and so uh, many people will probably remember well into the 50s uh, local citizens getting in their car and traveling to Bradford, uh, which Bradford was not uh, dry, and so you could go up and have a drink in Bradford. Uh, and obviously, you know, today we kind of laugh about this because the idea of people going up and, and uh, stocking up on alcohol and, and having uh, drinks in Bradford and then driving back to Newmarket would be very much frowned upon now with the problems with uh, drunk driving but back then uh, they seemed to think that that was a lesser evil to have people uh, drinking and then trying to make their way back to Newmarket but you know often when we look back in history we kind of wonder why they made the decision they did but they made that decision and this is the way it turned out. This is Did You Know on 102.7 CHOP FM. We will be right back after this. You're listening to Did You Know? The History of Prohibition in Newmarket on 102.7 CHOP FM. I'd also like to take a closer look at the Women's Christian Temperance Union, uh, better known locally as the uh, WCTU. Uh, it was the main organizing force behind the movement that, uh, that began in the 1870s uh, and eventually was successful in bringing about uh, prohibition here in Newmarket. If uh, you remember back in the, uh, before uh, the 18, or before 1954, uh, there used to be a fountain that sat on the corner of Park and Main in front of the Methodist Hotel. Uh, that fountain uh, was three tier. Uh, it served both humans, dogs, and horses, and that uh, particular fountain was placed there by the Temperance League, by the Women's uh, uh, Christian Temperance Union, uh, to celebrate uh, the fact that, uh, that Newmarket was dry, and also to remind Newmarket that there were other sources of, uh, uh, that would quench one's thirst. I guess the, the idea of uh, uh, for water uh, being the source of life uh, was what they were trying to push. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not so sure I would want to drink out of a fountain that was also being shared by dogs and horses. But again, uh, you know, looking back in hindsight, uh, I think it was more a, uh, a symbol of prohibition than it was uh, a functional uh, fountain, but it was indeed used. So when did Prohibition uh, stop? Well, in uh, 1953, uh, Council, by a narrow mar margin, uh, decided to, to, uh, to get rid of Prohibition. And in 1954, our first liquor uh, control board, or LCBO, uh, was opened uh, over on Eagle Street. And uh, our first uh, 
uh, beer store was opened in 1954 on Charles Street uh, here in Newmarket. Up until then, uh, if you wanted to uh, to have alcohol in your home or you wanted to go out for a drink, as I said before, you would go to Bradford or perhaps you would take uh, a trip to Hall Landing, uh, a huge uh, bootlegging operation opened up in Hall Landing, uh, which uh, serviced uh, Newmarket and Aurora, and they became quite profitable um, with uh, four or five major suppliers uh, developing uh, in that area, uh, typically around the area of River Drive Park. It's funny, when I think back to my own grandfather, uh, he indicated in the 1970s to me uh, during a uh, oral history interview that he felt that uh, uh, Newmarket, uh, while they had rescinded prohibition, would always be, uh, in essence, a, uh, a prohibition town. He thought it was part of our psyche uh, that we had a distrust of, uh, of alcohol and that is one of the reasons why I, I thought for sure that uh, when the opportunity to sell marijuana uh, that these pot, sh pot shops uh, was offered to us that, uh, that Newmarket would turn it down. I think that uh, Newmarket uh, probably in essence is still a prohibition uh, town. As the years passed the town seemed to lose its interest in the whole issue of temperance and uh, eventually what happened was that uh, we opened up outlets for alcohol, buying alcohol here in Newmarket. However, it is probably important to indicate that uh, uh, the sale of alcohol in, uh, in taverns and hotels uh, was very gradual. It wasn't until the early 1960s that uh, uh, Newmarket allowed you to, to buy alcohol if you were buying a meal. You were not allowed to go in and, uh, and buy just alcohol. You needed to buy a full meal in order to be able to have a drink uh, with your meal. So I think that's important uh, uh, to remember. The, uh, the other thing I think that's probably uh, important uh, is that with the rescinding uh, prohibition here in Newmarket, uh, one would expect that the uh, Temperance League would uh, would eventually disappear, uh, but the Temperance League, uh, and I'm sure uh, if you read the papers you'll notice this, the Temperance League is still very active. Uh, they came out of the woodwork uh, uh, when we were discussing uh, the idea of, uh, of opening pop shops here, and uh, they ran the, the uh, campaign to I guess you say reject the idea of having uh, these shops open in Newmarket. So they're certainly not um, dead. If you read my articles on Newmarket today, um, my weekly articles, you know, uh, I'm constantly referring to to events that have taken place uh, in our history where the temperance people are front and center in the discussions. In my history uh, of uh, Local churches, uh, we always talk about their part in the temperance movement and we talk about the importance that the churches played in the local temperance uh, movement. So, next time somebody asks you a question about what the future uh, will bring for Newmarket, I would suggest that it might be a good idea to read the old newspapers to uh, talk to uh, to your parents and grandparents and see what Newmarket used to be like. I would submit to you that uh, one can understand or better understand uh, life in Newmarket today if you understand what life was like uh, in the past because uh, one of the things that you'll find interesting about uh, human nature is that we don't really change very much. Our communities don't change very much. Uh, old ideas uh, cling um, very tightly to our psyche and if you want to know what the future is going to be like in Newmarket, it might be a good idea if you want to get a clue uh, to look at our history, our very rich history. 
I'm hoping that uh, you'll come back and join us uh, in the future uh, when we'll uh, tackle another uh, question from history. And uh, hopefully I did answer your question about uh, prohibition. That question, did you know about prohibition in Newmarket? Did you know how it began? And why uh, we were uh, dry for so long? I hopefully we answered that question for you. And I hope to see you back next, uh, next time. The, I always like to give people an idea of the, where we, uh, we get this information. Uh, so if you want further information, I would take a look at the minutes of the Newmarket Council, uh, which were uh, published in the Newmarket era, era from the uh, 1860s all the way up to uh, the 1970s. Take a look at social commentary uh, uh, column in Newmarket. This is where issues, local issues, were debated uh, quite hotly, and uh, there was major uh, uh, contributions by the movers and shakers locally, whether it be council or local businesses or the churches, uh, where they debated uh, issues. There's a number of, of really good books on our, our history. Uh, one of them is Stories of Newmarket uh, by Robert Terence Carter, Terry Carter, probably uh, the most important uh, local historian uh, we have. There's an excellent book by a gentleman named Peter Oliver uh, about the temperance movement in Canada. Newmarket uh, features very prominently in that book. And finally, The History of the Town of Newmarket by uh, Ethel Tuella. Uh, she gets into uh, the various characters involved in the temperance movement and talks about uh, the importance of the wives of the uh, council members who uh, pushed council to adopt uh, prohibition. Uh, I think that is a, kind of an interesting story and I think it, it brings up a, a whole different uh, uh, factor in our history. Uh, the part that women played behind the scenes uh, long before they had the vote uh, in determining uh, public uh, policy. So I hope you all uh, come back uh, next time for our, our next uh, topic and until then, take care.